I wanted to get into like, you know, the whole thing because you went to prison. Yeah, two years. Yeah. State. Did, wait, you I ain't go to Fed. State. State. I ain't go to Fed. Where, 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 where were you at? Shoot, I was in, um, where wasn't I at? They had me in seven different facilities. They had me in um, Downstate. Oh, that's my brother, Ball. Okay. We, you need the security. Y'all let him in there like that. Y'all need better security, bro. Nah, we, we, yeah. we're fine. We yeah, just, you're fine. Yeah, okay. Yeah, good. Good. <laughs> so um, they had me in uh, Downstate. Because when I first got remanded, they put me in a wheelchair for eight months on Rikers. Yeah, so um, I was. They didn't even give me medical treatment. So I was. I was moved. They was carrying me on gurneys back and forth in different buildings on Rikers for like four or five days, and then uh, seven days or something like that. And then my people got involved. De Blasio started getting some bad press, so they took me to the medical building where the judge told them to take me to in the first place. Mm -hmm. I could walk when I got remanded. Right. Um, and then. Once they came in and they got me into the medical building, he wanted me out of there, so they sent me to Downstate, which is a maximum security reception center, mm. and they run it like a supermax. Right, right, right. right. Um, then from there, they sent me to um, Marcy, which is a cut factory. Yeah, like, there's certain places you don't want to go. You don't want to go to Green. You don't want to go to Marcy. I've had a lot of friends go to Green. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't want to go to Green, bro. And these are medium. I mean, these I don't are want to go to any these places. No, absolutely. <laughs> I know. But yeah, you're saying, but you don't want to go there. You don't want to go Franklin, and you don't right. want to go to Bear Hill, right? Mm -hmm. So they sent me there. Um, then I had to go through medium um, reception, which is uh, what's that dirt farm? Let's start with a C. It's the worst place in the world. Um, I forget what that Comstack. was. No, no, Comstack is no. This is. Um, what's this? The, the reception, medium reception. I hate that place. No, not downstate. The medium one it starts with a C. Anyway, it's in my essay. Right. It's the worst place in the world. Um, uh, I was in Sing Sing. I was in Wallkill. And I was in Lincoln and work release before they closed it down. You don't hear a councilman say some shit like this. Like what? Like just, to, like, I mean, you have a different experience. Yeah. Like you have yeah. a different, I've never ever, I mean, you're the first councilman I've ever sat with in my life. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> right, right, right. I would never, like, this is the shit that I hear, like, my homies. So, right, you get right, what I'm saying. So right. it's like my, my perspective that you're giving me saying this. I'm like, damn. So you can you can you, you came from where you come from was was not an easy place nah, to grow up in. Nah, uh -uh. Then getting through that, you did what you was perceived as right, mm -hmm. and still ended up behind bars. So yeah. what I wanted to know is like, could you take me through the process of like exoneration? Yeah, but let me. There's well, two things. It's, it's there's two things that, you just. No, there's two things you just said that was uh, that part that probably right into it, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things was um, when you had said that uh, the experiences and the different things we they, they take us through. I wrote a essay. Mm -hmm. and it's a five part essay. It's called the New York State Criminal Injustice System versus. You might have to edit this out. The nigger council member Reuben Wells. No, we're keeping that right. And the reason why I did that is because you can take New York State out of it, and you can take the councilman out of it, Reuben Wills, but it'll still be the criminal injustice system versus the nigga. Mm. Because no matter, and I'm not glorifying that, but what I'm saying is to use it as the base racist term that it is, that's how they see us, no matter what we are. Right. Right? I was one of 51 that controlled the city. But they saw me as that. The media treatment was racist. They saw me as that because that's what they see us as on a regular basis. Right. And then the second thing was when I was in Midstate, I mean, when I was in, I went to Midstate too. When I was in Downstate, um, you know, they shave all your hair off. Now, I was 255. Um, I had lost like 30 pounds in like maybe a month. Right. Um, no, more than that. Um, so I was a little frail looking. You know, I'm having anxiety attacks, depression. Um, and I'm in a wheelchair. So my cousin came up to see me. And, uh, you know, they brought me out on the floor, but they had to keep me separated um, um, in a different section. And when I'm out on the floor, I'm like, yo, I, don't, I told my family not to come see me for the whole two years. Yeah. Right? I don't want nobody to see me. And um, I'm out on the floor, and I'm sitting there, and I, like, I couldn't hold it in. So my cousin was like, I'm going to tell you something that I know the way you think is going to think, you're going to think it's effed up, but... You're going to be all right because you was bred for this. Mm. He said, people that come from where we come from, they design it like that. So when we get here, we know how to handle this. Right. And that just, 
took me to a different place because I'm saying, this is my cousin who like I was raised up under. He's like the mayor of the projects, right? Yeah. Um, and he's sitting here telling me that I'm going to be all right. First, he said, because the who you are, no matter, they can drop you anywhere on God's earth and you're going to make it, right? Right. But you were bred for this. You come from South Jamaica. You right, come, right. There's, there's eight neighborhoods in Brooklyn, Bronx, Harlem. We come from certain places where they, it's like a mill. It's like a factory that they produce us and they produce us for the prison industrial complex. Right. So when you said those two things, that's that it just parlays directly into it because that's what it is. Yo, I, wow. I had I, I went to a when I dropped out of high school, I went to an alternative high school. And they had like cl- the classroom is a little bit bigger than this room. Mm-hmm. And they had like this uh this guidance counselor that came in like once a month mm-hmm. checking on us. Right. And like when I I'm this was when I was 16. Now that I think about it, I'm like, yo, this lady left me crying. <laughs> like for real, but yeah. I, but it, I, all I just told her was like regular shit, like like what you saying being bred for, right? Like she asked me where did I where did I see myself at twenty one? I was like I'm not gonna make it to twenty one, right? Well, I'm not. I don't even, how am I do something? I don't think I'm been alive at twenty one. The reason why I felt that way though was because it was like a young girl that you know we all played outside together and all of that, and she had just got murdered like maybe <laughs> two weeks before that counselor came in, mm. and then it's like you know just dealing with the police like. I remember when I was a little, little kid, I was like eight years old, no, five years old, I wanted to be a cop because I'm watching Police Academy, I'm right, watching Chips right, and all right, of that, and right. you think a badge and a gun and Dirty right, Harry, right. and um, then I seen a cop do something in front of me to my god brother that like really opened my eyes. You know, he um put something in my god brother's pocket and pulled it out, and when he looked at me, when I saw him, he winked at me, mm. and he proceeded to beat my god brother up, and you know... I, I, back, what I was basically getting at is like when you said what you're bred for, I really thought that I had like all of these things in my future. Like I thought that prison was going to be a part of my life. I thought that me taking another person's life had to be a part of my life. I thought that like in order for me to be a man where I was from, that I had to do these certain things. And it's just like hearing that and me telling you what I'm, I've went through, it's just heartbreaking for me for the youth because I'll be, I'll be like, damn, like a lot of them don't got a shot. Yeah, it's called the construction of a thug. It's, it's, it's literally a step-by-step practice on how they construct uh, the image of us being thugs. You'll see um, images of extremely large black men next to really small little women or something like that, so it looks intimidating. You'll see us in um, grimacing poses with the faces and different things like that. You'll see the media examples. That's why, I mean, I know everybody's had this experience where you see somebody shooting or there's somebody shot up something and on the news, but they don't show the picture and you go, that must have been a white person because they don't show the picture right away, right? Right. But if it was a black person, they got the picture up there, they got Facebook pictures with them doing stuff. They could have just been at a party enjoying stuff, but they picked the worst looking pictures, they put them up immediately and they put their record up. Right. When they start talking about, oh, it's a mental health issue, you know it wasn't a black person, right? Because it's a construction. This is what they do to make sure that the rest of us are either kept in our place or they're going to put us in certain places.